Hello and welcome to the Movie King Podcast. My name is David Germain and I'll be your host. To start off today's show, I'll be doing a review for the new horror film, The Substance. And in the second half, I'm going to talk about my thoughts on a Netflix movie called Uglies. And yes, it's a real movie. So, for The Substance, uh, uh, I just want to say, this movie had great word of mouth. That's I want to start off with that. Um, it won Best Screenplay at the Cannes Film Festival and has had some really crazy... Uh, you know, really reactions from a lot of different people. Uh, you know, a lot of people have been saying it's absolutely insane and nothing can prepare you for it. Um, you know, that just kind of makes it sound really intriguing. And the trailer looked good too. I thought the trailer looked really interesting. And, uh, you know, I have a pretty good stomach and I'm pretty capable of watching uh, scary, bloody horror movies these days. So I thought it shouldn't be that bad. Um, you know, Evil Dead was fine with me. Carrie's fine. Like, you know, I, I have a pretty good stomach, but uh, the thing is, it's body horror, so not your typical uh, horror movie, you know, like uh, if you've seen The Fly or The Human Centipede or The Thing, even Alien maybe could uh, be considered body horror. Um, if you don't know what body horror is, it's it's often the, uh, I mean, I'm saying it literally, it's the horror of the body though, but it's like, um, you know, bones kind of cracking and, you know, body parts opening up and things, you know, gore getting thrown all over the place, body parts, like, changing and rotting, and all these things, um, you know, people maybe being, like, stapled on other bodies, body parts falling out, it's gross, it's great, uh, <laughs> it's just, you know, um, but it's a very specific type of horror that not everyone's okay with, um, some people, you know, really like that type of horror, but, uh, it's not a, you know, if you're thinking horror is simply related to jump scares and being spooked out, uh, this is not that. This is a very different type of horror, so I think that's a good thing to note. And first off, I'll say people were not lying about this movie. <laughs> I thought I was pretty well prepared going in, even with my worst expectations. Like, even, like, thinking, like, all right, I'm so prepared to be grossed out of my mind right now. Uh, this movie is far more disturbing and disgusting than anything I could have possibly anticipated. Some parts of this movie made me flat out queasy and nauseous. I don't say that often. <laughs> like, I literally, uh, I, I can't even show my face right now, but, like, during the movie, I just have my jaw dropped, like, eyes wide open, like, what the heck am I watching right now? This is seriously messed up. Uh, yeah, it's like, what's wrong with the people who made this, really? No, um, but it's, it's so crazy how far this movie goes. Like, it constantly one-ups itself, too. Um, you know, I was thinking, like, there's no way it could get more insane. And, like, you know, 40 minutes in the movie, I'm like, there's no way this can get, like, that much crazier than this. And it just does. It keeps going. Like, you know, on a scale of, like, 1 to 10, you know, 1 being totally easy to handle, 10 being, like, I want to throw up, you know, it goes to a 10, and then next thing you know, it's at a 20, because it's, like, it just keeps going, it keeps getting worse, things keep getting crazier, I'm not even kidding, like, you know, The Fly, The Thing, you know, like, those are movies, like, I would say are pretty, pretty gross and go pretty far, this movie, like, makes those movies look so tame in comparison, um, even a recent memory, like, uh, the movie Men, the last 10 minutes of men, like, I remember watching that being like, this is so weird and gross and, like, bizarre and makes me feel, like, kind of queasy, like, you know, and and now I'm watching, like, this movie and I can just think now, like, if I watch men now, I'm just gonna be, like, totally, like, numb to it because this movie is, like, so far out there and <laughs> so, so, so much. Really crazy, but... Really great prosthetics and makeup in this movie, though, is is another point I really want to make. Like, that's partly what sells the grossness of it. Like, it's uh, it's all due to these great practical effects, prosthetics and makeup and blood and you know all that, all that stuff that just kind of you know makes us believe what we're watching is real. This movie does a very impressive job with all of that and really sells everything it's doing. Uh, I believed everything I was looking at. And that's, you know, for these people making the movie, that's all they want. They want you to believe it, and believe it I did. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm... Ugh, some of these images are just burned in my memory right now. But this movie also has great performances. Uh, Demi Moore, 
I haven't seen her in too much from what I can remember, but she's uh, definitely a pretty well-known name. Um, she's really good here. Really liked her performance a lot. She uh, just kind of has a lot to do with being an older actress and um, has to sell a lot of what she's feeling. Um, and I'll kind of get to a little bit of that in like the writing section, but um, just to kind of say it now, the characters in this movie don't really often say what they're feeling. They, it, it's often shown. Uh, so I think Demi Moore had a really complicated task to play there and really selling it to the audience of what she feels. Uh, and I think she did a very good job. Margaret Qualley, great actor. Uh, I've seen her in a lot of stuff recently. Uh, she is terrific in this too. Love the sort of like total contrast to Demi Moore's character that she gives, uh, but also keeping some similar things in there. Really uh, great from her. And Dennis Quaid is the other one that stands out. Uh, he's just in a, I don't know what movie he's in. Like, I mean, obviously I know what Dennis Quaid is from, but like in this movie, he just doesn't feel like he belongs in this movie, but I love what he does here. Like, uh, he feels like he's like straight out of Cat in the Hat or something. <laughs> it's like, it's totally like, he's just, it's his total cartoon here. Like, everything he says is just so over the top and crazy. And I don't know what movie he was in, but I, I like this performance. It was funny. But the story here is actually really good. Uh, good character motives. It's thematically rich. There's an intriguing concept. Um, I'll just kind of give a very, a very uh, brief synopsis of the story here for those of you who are interested. And that is largely, uh, it's an older actress. She's not very uh, popular anymore. She had, you know, she was kind of grew out of her fame and people don't really appreciate her much anymore. And she wants to be, you know, she wants to be young and perfect again. And there's this substance that, a uh, mysterious substance that she finds out about that can supposedly do that. And that's all I'll kind of say. But from there, the movie gets crazy and intense and gross. And um, I just think it really did a great job with handling all these different ideas and making it very intriguing to the viewer, keeping you always guessing where it's going to go next. I just really liked all of that. But a lot of what this movie does so well, it does because of the script. And it's a very efficient script. That's something I, I also really appreciate about this movie. It constantly chooses to show over tell, as I kind of said earlier, and you don't see that too often. And uh, I guess to some people it may not be clear enough. Some people like characters just constantly saying uh, what they what's on their mind, but I think it's very effective here. Uh, the first scenes in the movie especially tell you everything you need to know about the characters, the situations they're in. It's a it's a shot looking down on this Hollywood star, um, you know, on the Walk of Fame, and you just find out everything. That you know, and it's so effective. It like kind of reminded me of like Pixar's visual storytelling that you'd see in their their best movies, like in Up. Like you just, you know, it's quiet. Like there's no talking. It's just you see it and you know exactly what they're trying to tell you. It's so effective. I love that. Uh, there's another scene where just you're seeing like this egg, and what it does with the egg also tells you everything you need to know. It's just so effective and efficient. I, I just don't see that that much nowadays. Like, it's really uh, so refreshing to see that. And, of course, this movie is written and directed by Coralie Farja, a uh, French director. Um, I've never seen anything from her before, and after this, I <laughs> would like to see more from her, but uh, I'll definitely need to prepare myself a little better next time. Her direction is very interesting. It's unlike anything you've seen before. Maybe that's because it's, she's French, so there's a very different style from over there. But there's lots of bizarre shots. There's normal scenes. What would be normal scenes to us in another movie are played very uncomfortable to watch here. Like, uh, the cinematography and editing also play a big part of this, by the way. But there's just like a scene where, you know, Dennis Quaid's character is just eating shrimp at a restaurant. And it is so uncomfortable to watch. Like, I, I can't even explain what it is, really. It's just, like, the way it's shown, it's kind of gross. And um, just the, the shot choices, like, how close up you are to his mouth. It's just, like, it puts you in this really, like, uncomfortable position where you're just like, ah, uh, get away. And I think the sound design is also a big part of that, too, because you're hearing all these noises, and it, it just really immerses you. I don't know, everything... 
technically about the movie, the score, and just, it all kind of goes together. It all really culminates in, like, this feeling you have when you're watching it. It's just like, something's not right here. Something feels very off. And it's played throughout the entire movie. And these are just normal scenes. I mean, you can only imagine how the the really crazy ones are where, you know, it's actually trying to be uncomfortable. Like, it's it's really, it's a lot. And the production design, too, is also very effective. It feels like these very big hallways and spaces. And uh, once again, I would just like to really shout out also how good the the themes are here. Like, this movie, for all the gross things in it, right, for all the disturbing imagery it has, it has something to say. Like, there actually is, you know, pun intended, there is substance here. It has a lot to say about uh, the standards of beauty out there, like the the insane expectations we have for people, how they look, and how they age. There's this one scene where Demi Moore is getting ready for a date, and she's just kind of looking in the mirror, and she's trying to perfect herself and really, like, look pretty. And it's it's almost, like, comedic with what it goes for. Like, she keeps trying to fix herself, but she's not happy with it. Um, but it's also very sad, too, because, you know, you just kind of see this and you're like, I'm sure there are a lot of people out there who do feel this way. Like, no matter how much they touch up and, you know, try to make themselves look as good as they can, they won't feel like it's good enough. And uh, that's a lot, of, a lot of what this movie's trying to say. And I thought it was very well done here. Like, I thought, like, it really captured what it was trying to say. And I, I could feel that even if I couldn't, like, always relate to it, I thought it was very uh, well communicated. Now, as for issues, I I think the big one here is that it goes on way too long. This movie is about 2 hours 20 minutes with credits, and I felt like the movie itself kind of ended 30 minutes before the credits rolled. Like, you got about an hour and 45 minutes in, and I thought like the movie was about to end, but little did I know, like that was not even the craziest part of the movie, (laughs) like it just kept going. So, I, and I understand why it kept going, like, after watching the movie, I grew to kind of appreciate what was, what the last, like, 30 minutes were, the last 20, 30 minutes were a little better, but I think the pacing is very slow, and as a result, I was kind of checked out before the movie actually ended, which, to me, is a very big problem, um, and is really the thing holding this movie back for me a lot, like, I would probably love this movie if it wasn't for really those last, you know, the last third, really just feeling too drawn out, because I was just really done, like, I was, and maybe it's, I might partly have to blame, like, just how gross it became, and how, like, intense it got, because to me, I was just kind of also, like, I can't take much more of this, (laughs) like, I'm just, like, so, I'm so sick watching this right now, that maybe, uh, that partially affected where I was at mentally in the movie, and just kind of, like, all right, please wrap up, I can't take this anymore. That might have been part of it, too. Uh, I might have to rewatch it to find that out. I don't know if I want to rewatch it, though, to be honest. Like, I don't know. Uh, maybe I'll maybe I'll rewatch it when it's on TV. Uh, we'll see. But that is something that I would like to point out. So that the pacing is really, I think, the big problem I have. Other, other problems I had are more nitpicky, but there's a few I'll mention. One is that there's some strange distracting choices, like the lack of detail in the world building. Um, you'll, you'll notice this if you watch it, but the substance mentioned in the title, you know, as mentioned in the title of the movie, has very vague instructions, and somehow the characters know exactly what to do. I just didn't think it was that clear, so I was like, how do you, how do you know what you're doing exactly? They seem to know exactly what to do, so, I don't know, that was a little distracting to me, and obviously, you know, the substance is just called the substance, and then there's, like, no actual titles, in this world, like, uh, the big TV network that the movie revolves around is just called The Network and has The Show, so it's like, why no names, you know, like, I mean, there's a reason, I'm sure, like, that's something you could, and, you know, you could just fill that in with, like, The Joe Show, or, you know, The Joe Schmo Show, like, it doesn't really matter, but, like, why, you chose no name, and I'm curious to know why, uh, and then another thing is the comedy didn't always work for me, it felt kind of satirical at times, and I think that worked, but... I would also find that it occasionally became a little too much and kind of got cartoonish, especially towards the end of the movie, which clashed with the extremely disturbing imagery. So 
I kind of felt like a little bit of like a conflict of like, I'm not sure what I'm supposed to be feeling here. Uh, I was in a pretty, pretty busy theater. Like there were a lot of people there. Um, no one was really laughing at it. So, but then I've seen a lot of people online saying they thought it was very funny. So I'm not really sure what I was supposed to take away from it, but I didn't personally find it that funny. I was just finding it like, like you could tell it was trying to have humor in it, but I didn't really laugh. So didn't always work for me. Sometimes it did. Sometimes it didn't. But those are really my main issues with it. And as a whole, I think I really like this movie. Um, but I'm curious to see how others react to it. Some think it's a masterpiece. Uh, again, like this movie won Best Screenplay at cons. Some people are raving about it, saying it's like the best film of the year. And then I could totally see some other people either, you know, just vomiting or walking out. Like, some people are going to hate this movie. Uh, I'm very sure of that. But, again, some will love it, too. I'm not really sure what's going to happen, though. Like, the Rotten Tomato scores, like, for audiences, people seem not too harsh on it. And also, the cinema score that came out this weekend is also not... Uh, I think it got, like, a B, which, for cinema score, is um, not high, but it's it's not... I thought this was going to be, like, a C, D, or F, like, in that range. So, maybe uh, people kind of enjoyed it overall. I don't know, but... Um, just know you will have feelings one way or the other about this movie. You are definitely going to feel something towards it. Um, and you will definitely remember it for the rest of the year. I can tell you that much. Because this movie is seriously, like, one of the most disturbing, gross things I've ever seen. So <laughs> it really, really stands out. But overall, I give it a B plus. It's uh, very good. Not great. I can't give it great because the pacing, I think, is really the thing holding it back for me. But, you know, maybe on rewatch, if I kind of get along with it better, I know what to expect more too, so maybe I'll feel a little differently. This is one of those movies that you have to digest a lot afterwards. Truthfully, when I walked out, it was a little lower than a B plus, so it, it definitely went up as I thought about it. But uh, yeah, that's my thoughts on the substance. And now, let's talk about uglies. So, I wasn't planning on talking about this movie for the record but it actually pairs so well with the substance that I'm going to talk about it. Um, so let's start off. This movie was directed by Mick G. Uh, real, real director, by the way. This is uh, That's his name. I don't know if he has another name besides that, but he's called Mick G. And he did some movies I am not fond of. Uh, most recently, Family Switch, which is, let's put it politely, it's my least favorite movie of last year. It's, uh, it's a movie that caused me physical pain watching it just seeing it literally made me feel ill in a completely different way than the substance uh i had like ah uh, man some movies in that scene make me want to like just throw a remote at the tv it's so bad please don't watch please don't watch family switch please i'm begging you uh, but um this movie uglies is based on a book and to me it's a terrible concept like the whole idea of this movie and the book is, yeah, it's about these people. It's this world that kind of had, like, a whole thing with, uh, I think, like, global warming. And then they had, like, uh, people were kind of obsessed with how they looked. And then when you turn 16, you get a surgery that'll make you look pretty. So no one has to worry about how they look ever again. It's a story about not succumbing to beauty standards. And if it sounds familiar, that's because it's basically you know, similar themes to what we had in the substance, but this movie just does everything so much worse, like, in every way, even just basic choices uh, are just not as good, like, um, you know, this movie is casting good-looking actors as people who are supposed to look ugly, and that is kind of something that the substance leans into a little bit, um, this movie is like, the whole point is kind of around that, and... I thought it felt flat here, like, you know, you have, like, Joey King, supposed to be, like, the lead character who's ugly and not doesn't look good, but, like, of course, she's, like, a very pretty woman. Hollywood just does that trend a lot, and in this case, like, it's very intentional, like, um, that what they're doing, but I just don't think they actually communicated why here, like, McGee said it was because he wanted to really show, like, just how bad it was that these people who are supposed to be good-looking... Uh, don't think they are, but it just 
doesn't work here. Like, I don't think the movie actually did a good enough job communicating its themes, so therefore I didn't really catch on to that very much. And even having read it, I'm, I don't really think it did a good job. And that's not to mention this movie also casts uh, 25 to 30-year-olds as 16-year-olds. Like, that's a very big age gap. I didn't believe for a second in this movie I was watching 16-year-olds. Like, they all look... I mean, they're literally, all the actors, the big actors in here are older than me. And they're supposed to be playing high schoolers, basically. Like, it's so bizarre to me. Like, why'd you do that? It's just, ugh, that's McG for you. Uh, I'm sure, you know, he might be a great guy on the side. Nothing against him as a person, but his movies just really don't work for me. This movie also just has awful writing. It feels like it's written by AI. That's something I also said about Family Switch. I don't like getting on the written by AI train because I know how much work it takes to write a movie and make it good, but there's just something so robotic and manufactured about the way this movie comes across. Like, it's just so half-baked. This whole movie is just so half-baked, and it's boring to sit through. Very boring to sit through. Like, I was having a hard time. It's only an hour and a half or so. It's not even that long. But it feels so much longer than that. And it has such unlikable characters that you don't understand why they're even, like, close in the first place. I mean, there's this nice-ish and okay relationship, you know, between, like, these two girls. It's, like, a nice friendship they have-ish. Like, again, I, I don't even really care about it. But, like, it, compared to anything else in the movie, it's probably the only thing that's somewhat competent. But, um... There's, like, this one flashback towards the beginning of the movie. This guy and the girl, like, they're supposed to be, like, best friends when we see them at first. And the flashback is kind of showing them becoming close because the girl wasn't paying attention. The guy was, like, calling her out, you know, like, hey, hey, get, you know, I need you. And then, like, you know, she's, like, looking at her tablet for something, and he just, she, she's not paying attention. So he just, like, grabs her tablet, smashes it, and then, <laughs> then he scars his hand. Uh, and then it's, like... And she's, she feels bad and then scars her hand. And I'm like, why do I care right now? Like, what? You, you just took her tablet and smashed it. Like, because she wasn't listening to you for, like, what, 10 seconds? Like, why are you best friends? I don't know. That's the whole... The movie is, like, established on this relationship. So it's like, that's already, like, why do I care? It's so poorly done. It's so, like, again, just so manufactured. Like, nothing feels natural at all. Again, in the, like, in the substance, things really feel, like, earned, you know? Like, it takes its time, it feels, like, f you know, relationships and ideas are actually kind of, like, you know, they feel thought out, and, again, this movie doesn't even have to, like, that movie didn't even have to explain stuff, like, it was just showing it, and you felt it. This movie, even through, like, explaining it constantly over this terrible exposition, you do not care at all. So it's just really bad. It's super predictable too. Like you can see everything coming from over a mile away. There's not a single surprise this movie offers. It's also occasionally like so unintentionally funny. Like it takes itself so seriously that you can't help but laugh at it at times. Like this whole idea that you know the girl starts off the narration like so we're called uglies and I'm like, <laughs> I'm like it's what what is this movie? Is who is this made for? I don't know. Was the book good? I never read the book. I'm someone read the book out there. Is it good? This movie's garbage. I don't know. Um, and yeah, it's just so, pain so painfully generic. It's not original at all. Uh, I've I've seen so many better versions of this type of movie, and just the substance. I just saw that after Uglies, and I was like, wow, this movie just does such a a much better job at doing very similar ideas uh, in a completely different type of movie, but. You really just felt it so much more in that one. And even though, like, it's a very different type of movie, you really just connected with it a lot more. And you could actually see, like, what it was trying to say. Like, the substance has much more to say on beauty standards not, and not succumbing to beauty standards and, you know, being happy with how you look. Uh, that movie has a lot more to say about that than Uglies ever does. Yeah. That was my rant on Uglies. I give it a D minus. It gets a uh, doesn't get an F because again that the one thing with the two girls was like okay enough that I I can't totally hate this movie. But ugh, ugly's God, I'm so exhausted just talking about that. Oh my God.
But, yeah, go see The Substance if you're going to watch any of these movies. I mean, you know, this, these are very, uh, two movies that really shouldn't be paired together, but they kind of are perfect together because they really do explore similar ideas. Um, and that about does it for this episode. Uh, if you want to follow my reviews, you can find me on Letterboxd at MovieKing1224. You can also listen to this podcast on your favorite apps such as Spotify, YouTube, Apple Podcasts, and Amazon Music. If you have any comments or feedback, I would love to hear it and improve the show. And of course, if you've enjoyed this episode, please consider liking, subscribing, and hitting the notification bell to hear more like it. I appreciate you all so much for listening, and I'll talk to you next time. Thank you. Bye-bye.